you wait for a load of buses and then a load come all at once. Now, inspections, uh, busy social life, my business, I've all kept me busy for a while. But I'm hoping to be a little bit more consistent with this channel and keep uploading those helpful resources that students need as they're using Microsoft Access or Excel or whether they're programming. And those administrative systems which I'm creating for myself and I might as well share with other teachers. And the IT systems from back in the day when I used to build systems, I'm going to basically over time kind of eat those out and give those out as well. Now, today on Matt Parker Tutorial Services, it's two videos in one day, bit of a dedication going on because what I'm going to do, it might even be three videos, my God, that'll be my work for the week. Now, today I'm going to show you how to validate for postcode in Microsoft Access. There's been a huge amount of stuff done on this and this way works and that way works. So I thought the best way to do it would be to give it to a class as a task on a Thursday afternoon. Well, it wasn't the only thing I asked them to do. Nevertheless, um, as you know, post, UK postcodes, and this is just for the UK, cause a huge amount of problems for people who are just developing in Access. Because you've got the pattern is one or two letters, followed by one or two numbers, followed by a number and then two letters. And this causes a variety of problems. Now, what I've done, okay, for my students, okay, and I must say thanks to Nick D'Souza, I must say thanks to Chris Chatfield, I must say thanks to Miles Thomas. These are the three guys who came up with this solution, all independently mined, and it was tested. Now, the only weakness in this is that you have to put a space in between um, the first four or three or whatever it is digits and the second. So you imagine the postcode split into two main parts, you'd have to split it. Now, obviously, okay, you'd go into your table, whatever it is in design view, you'd go to the relevant field. Now, your input mask goes in here. I've used this arrow to denote capitals and I'm always a bit generous when I'm using these. So I've given it 11 characters just in case. And as I said, we've got a caption in there. Now, that doesn't replace the field name, but that will appear on the name on whenever you make a form, which is quite handy. And so the po without any further ado, because there's lots of input, cast ma input mass characters, I found that these two work, okay? And that's it, really. Put the input mask in the right place, try it. Give me some feedback, let me know whether I'm right or not. Whether It won't work everywhere in the UK because there's some um, postcodes that are completely letters to do with special military depots or postage depots. But for residential addresses, I think you'll find that the solutions that I'm proposing work. If they don't, please let me know. As, as you were aware, Matt Parker Tutorial Services is there to help students with the coursework help teachers with their admin and help businesses get those IT systems off the ground without running to big companies and spending lots of money. That's it. A little bit longer than I expected. Thank you for listening.